Hello everybody, this is PD at Bergsberg Arcade at BergsbergArcade.com and we're going to be taking a look at the new particle system that comes with uh, Unity 3.5, the developer preview. So with that said, let's go ahead and load up the demo project that comes with Unity 3.5 uh, for the uh, particle system. And I've already gone ahead and loaded up the first scene, the dust devil scene. And let's just start it off. And we have a little tornado effect here going on, or a dust devil as it's called. And if we go ahead and expand the hierarchy, we'll notice that there's actually uh, child particle effects under it. And if we look at it in the scene view while it's running, uh, it seems upside down. Uh, let me see here. Uh, the parent, it's rotated on the X axis. That's why uh, I was wondering why the Z and the Y were not quite right. Uh, but anyway, it looks pretty cool. I'm just going to quickly run through all these and we'll look at the actual particle system itself. Uh, some of the features, at least the, a basic over, overview of it. Uh, next is the exploding paint or blood. So we'll just start it off and well, there's an explosion. Okay, it just hits the ground and spreads out. That looks pretty cool. I haven't actually been looking at the stats for them. That's actually pretty good. Now let's take a look at that dust devil again. We'll see. Yeah, draw calls are still really low. It's a really cool effect. And the exploding paint, I'm pretty sure is also, yeah, it has childs as well, okay. Looks like it goes three deep in this one. That's fine. Let's take a look at the explosion. Uh, we'll try it again. I just want to take a look at the draw calls and the triangles. That's still fine. That's a pretty cool looking, uh, pretty cool looking explosion. Uh, fireworks. Fireworks are a pretty popular uh, particle system. Uh, most of them usually have a little bit uh, to be desired. This one actually looks pretty good. You have the multiple colors when it goes off, different. Uh, well, it's, it's all pretty much the exact same effect for this one here. It actually looks pretty good. And if you take a look here, I don't think there's any scripts at all. I believe it's all done with the particle systems. Yep, I'm not seeing any script whatsoever attached to anything. Great. So let's go ahead and open up the next one, the flare. Yeah, we'll just take a look at this one. Uh, that actually looks really cool. The, uh, the lighting effect on the smoke, I really like that. And um, let's see, do we actually have anything? You notice the bouncing on the ground here. There's actually nothing that it's bouncing on, it looks like. It looks like it's just, well, here, let's go to the scene view. If we go in on the particle effect, and they all seem to be rotated 270 on the X, or at least the two that I've looked at. Uh, but anyway, if you zoom in, you'll notice that there's nothing there for it to bounce on, it just bounces. So let's go ahead, we'll Split the screen up a bit so we can see both at the same time. And let's actually move this around a bit just to demonstrate what I'm trying to show here. Uh, helps if I click it. But as you move the particle effect, you notice it's still looks like it's bouncing off something, but it's always a set distance. Oops, I moved it over too far. But anyway, you get the idea of what I'm trying to talk about. That's another new feature of the new particle system that actually looks pretty cool. Uh, let's go ahead and actually take a look at the particle system itself. So I'm actually just going to go in and create a new scene. I'm not going to bother naming it because I'm just going to be taking a look at the actual particle system. And I'm going to go into the scene and we'll go ahead and we'll just create a new particle system. Uh, here we go. We got our just our generic particle system. I'm just going to reset everything. Uh, I want a nice big screen here. So I'm actually going to go ahead Focus in on it. Uh, let me see here. Uh, fix my axes. There we go. 
All right, so what's that look like in game view? Just like a clump of uh, wispy dots. Uh, let's start going over the particle system. And let's just go through the variables. The duration, uh, that's basically how long your particle system is going to last. So if you actually start the game up, it's going to last for five seconds and then it will slowly fade out after the five seconds. So we'll just let it run. Uh, I guess we should have timed it. Unfortunately, I have looping on, so it's just going to keep going. If we would actually turn looping off, which just keeps the particle system uh, well, going over and over again. So we'll turn this off and start it up. It, the particle system itself should last for five seconds before it starts to fade. One, two, three, four, and five. And we notice the new particles are not being created and the old ones are fading out. Great, so that brings us down to our next variable here, which is looping. And if you have that on, it just keeps looping. So after the five seconds, it, it's just gonna keep going. Uh, the next variable is pre-warm, which basically starts uh, your particle system up at the end. Uh, basically, it simulates as if it's already run once. So now when you start it up, uh, it doesn't have that initial growing effect. It, it's already, it has already been growing. And some of these actually do have tooltips. So if you hover over some of them, you'll actually get a bit of a, a hint. And of course you can have a start delay. So if you turn pre-warm off, and let's make a two second start delay, which is basically just tells us to wait two seconds before we start. So we'll start the game up. One, 1,000, two, 1,000 particles. Nothing too complicated there. I'm just gonna turn the pre-warm back on. Actually, let's leave that off, and I'm actually going to leave the looping off because I think it might be a little bit easier to see what some of these other variables do. Uh, starting energy is, uh, we'll, well, we'll cover the curve in a second. Starting energy is basically just how long each particle lasts. So we start it up, and I guess I should turn off that start delay. If we were to actually go ahead and adjust this, let's just stop that. Oh, I don't know, let's go 10, and let's actually make the starting delay just one second. And we'll start it up. And we'll notice the particles themselves last longer. There we go. And well, we might as well look at these curves. You can actually start setting curves for them. You can random between two. Uh, right now we just have it set for a constant, which just allows you to pick a number. But if you pick a curve and you select the curve line, or maybe it's showing down here. I need to move this up. Yeah. You can actually see the curves down here, and you can actually go in and edit the curves. Uh, let me see which one did I pick for here. Uh, we'll just pick one. I start adjusting it. And these are the exact same curves that you should be used to from previous versions of Unity. So there we go. And there's a few defaults to start off with. Uh, that's kind of cool. I'm just going to go back to constant just because it makes it easy to see what's going on. I'm just going to leave the starting energy at two. Well, no, I want a little bit longer. Let's do three. Uh, starting speed is just basically exactly what you think it is. It's the speed it moves when it starts. And of course, we also have the ability to uh, set different curves and random curves between two different points. There we go. Uh, let's just go ahead and start it up. So it just affects the speed. And again, I'm just going to set this to a constant. We'll leave it at five. Uh, starting size, just like before, uh, you can have a different size that it starts at, then have it change over time. Now, having it change over time is in a different spot, but this is the starting size. And of course, we can adjust the curve. Uh, rotation, exact same thing. You can have it rotate over time and Right here is where you'd want to set this starting rotation. I'm actually going to change the color just to make it a little easier to see. Uh, let's go with like a red. And I do have it selected. Uh, I think it's, usually you can see it running. But anyway, let's just start up, take a look. Sure enough, we've seen the color change before. So we have red particles. Uh, let me see. Uh, might not have a certain option. Usually you can watch it go while you're making edits. Uh, simulate right here. <laughs> we actually have this new particle uh, little overlay right here. 
I'm actually, I think it's new. But anyway, you can uh, watch exactly what's going on here. It gives you a, a start and a stop, and it'll also tell you the playback speed. And as you can see, how long it's been running. So I'm just going to stop it. Uh, gravity modifier, which is actually pretty cool. Let me shoot this up in one direction. Well, here, if we start it up, I'm actually going to add a gra gravity modifier, and we'll just go small at first. We'll just do a one. And if you hover over it, it might give you some um, idea of what's going on. I just want to know if this was actually a float or or, or not. But uh, let me just take a look here. And you'll notice they're just falling straight down on Of course, if you adjust the modifier, not as much. Let's go into a negative modifier, make them float. Uh, there we go. I'm actually going to switch this back to one. Uh, inherit velocity. Uh, I believe that's actually if it's attached to something else, it'll inherit the velocity of, of whatever it's attached to if, if it's moving. I'm not 100% sure. Uh, there's no tooltip. So it's something I'm going to have to look into. Uh, locked transform. I'm assuming, again, if this is attached to something. Uh, play on awake is if you want this to fire off as soon as the game object is put into an awake state. And the max particles. We have 1,000. Let's actually try increasing that to maybe, I don't know, 10,000. I just want to actually see what the stats are. But since it's just a basic particle effect, it really shouldn't be that bad. Yeah. That's good. So let's go down to emissions. I'm just going to shrink this up. Well, one thing I actually want to point out up here before we jump on is you have this little plus button now. And you can add different modules to your particle system. So if we click the plus button, uh, you have the ability to add uh, sub emitters, uh, color over time. Oh, well, you can see them all right here. Uh, if I have time at the end of this, maybe I'll go into a couple of these. But I am restricted to being about, I think, 15 minutes, 10 to 15 minutes. So... Uh, here's some more modules to play with anyway if I don't get a chance to cover them. 